I'm Suparna Goswami. I'm Associate Editor with Information Security Media Group. IAM has not been an easy problem to solve. While there are many aspects under IAM, today we will touch upon IAM governance. I have with me today three security practitioners and we will discuss on how one should go about governance of identity and access management. Please join me in welcoming Varun Kakkar, who is Group Head of Cybersecurity at Tricor Group. Mark Frogoso, who is Group CISO at Mint, and Shane Reed, who is Chief Information Security Officer and Chief Information Officer at Extrust. A very warm welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for joining. So gentlemen, as I said, I am is such a huge topic. So for this discussion's sake, let us concentrate on one aspect under I am, I am governance. What aspect under governance is a big challenge for you all, because I have been hearing, I have had individual conversations with all, uh, with each of you, and all of you agree that governance is a, a tough aspect to crack. So, what particular aspects are challenging? Varun, you would like to start? Yeah, hi, thanks, thanks, Suparna, thanks for inviting me. Um, happy to be here. Um, yeah, as, as you say, I mean, uh, I am is definitely a, a, a wide uh, topic, uh, and governance is a particular challenge. I, I think for in, in my experience, for a, for a couple of important reasons. Uh, one, it is primarily usually driven as a technology project. Uh, I, I think that's where we, we lose out on what's the core uh, objective of running a identity governance initiative, right? Uh, so, so you have to be in very close relationship with business as to what you want to achieve, uh, rather than trying to run it as a core technology only project. Uh, at the end of the day, we're trying to uh, put governance on on identities on on the systems, and and systems are the driving business. Uh, so so that's that's one thing that 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 we tend to miss out on. And and the other challenge that we have with governance is is in most organization, unless you're a greenfield organization, in most historical organization, you have tons of silos. Uh, so bringing all of those systems together under the same umbrella of policy process uh, with different business owners uh, is, is particularly challenging, right? So I, I think the, 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 one of the things that we could potentially do is, is, is try and break silos uh, as much as we can realistically in an organization based on the appetite uh, so, so that we can have a sort of a consolidated and standardized view on governance as well. Uh, so, so these are the two things that I have personally felt quite challenging to deal with in, in terms of governance on, on top of identity. Uh, and, and I think they, these, are, these are the areas that, that we, we definitely need to put some focus on. Sure. So Mark, as Varun said, uh, that we need to break the silos, uh, especially where there is uh, practically, of course, because not, it's easier said than done. So would you like to throw some more light on this particular aspect? And again, the same question to you. What, uh, anything unique that you find very, very challenging under IAM governance? Sure. So I, I'm, I'm pretty much aligned with uh, what Varun have mentioned. It's really the, the, those two things, right? It's being seen as tech, tech only project. It's really not. It's, it's, a, it's a holistic corp, um, organization. Uh, it's, it, it, the other one is really about silos. And I think from a, from a security profes professional standpoint, Really having a understanding of of your organization as a whole is a key is key really right so so um, you know which teams um, uh, are are kind of like having a role and responsibility as part of your overall IAM right um, I think the the other challenge and just to just to touch on the second the, the, the original question the way I look at it now is really about um, visibility I mean everything in security is about visibility right um, and in this in this particular case would be visibility about uh, the identities and the user users right um, across in its in its entire life cycle right so that in itself right now is a challenge because there are a lot of resources where you need to know what identities are on there and what entitlements are on there and so all of these identities or even user accounts it's not just about getting to know them but also putting context around them right meaning you know Who's got the most privileged access here, right? For example, right? And then, is there like a segregation of duties that's that, that, that's, that's that's happening or conflict that's that's going on there, right? So, 
Um, the other thing from a governance perspective is all is really operational, right? I mean, you also wanted to check into yeah, how effective um, and even efficient my current IAM right now, right? So the operational aspect to that. And the other side to that is, how do we get more value with the current IAM practices that's being implemented now in the organization? Like run for it, and this is very much um, across the industry. I think uh, in JP Morgan, they call this access for certification. In Citi, we call this entitlement reviews. In, in my organization, we call this logical access reviews. But this particular area of IAM, I think it's more of like a tick box exercise, right? Because if the managers would then have 100 people that he or she needs to review every semi-annually, every six months, and they just say, just tick all the box and just done, where's the value in that, right? So I think we need to also challenge the current IAM practices. Is, is there such a value from a security perspective? Um, on the silos component, I guess we need to, uh, it should be an up-down approach, I guess, uh, because it's as was what Varun mentioned, it should be an, uh, an organization-wide initiative. And then setting the expectations around roles and responsibilities across the organization and so that they are aligned into the IAM initiative or effort as a, as a program, as, as you guys are building the program. So, yeah. So, Shane, uh, so far we have touched upon breaking the silos. It's looked as a technological problem. Then, of course, visibility. What aspects do you want to touch upon here? Yeah. Yeah, no, so myself, um, there's going to be two, it, uh, it's all hybrid together, right? We're, we're all we're all on the same song sheet here around the same challenges. But but the two I'd identify for everyone uh, listening today would be uh, the ownership structure um, of, you know, we're, we're mere facilitators, right? So we, we just put the systems in place, whether it be from technology or the security, but the driver of, um, uh, sorry, we're the implementer, but the, the real owner of each access control needs to be given back to the business owners or the system owners. So often we put our security hats on or our IT hats on, we say, oh, this is our system to own and manage, which it is, but the reality is in an IAM and a PAM or a CIAM, um, we're just there to do, provide the, the, the tools for how the organisation implements. So head of HR is responsible for who gets access to the HR system. Um, and, and they also work out the uh, the roles, the RBAC model inside of there. We we with us, and we may enforce that and control that, um, so we don't break um, data governance. We don't break uh, privacy principles along the way. Um, we can't be the the ones driving that because all of a sudden we'll turn around and and we've applied the wrong controls in place, which is what governance is, right? It's the controls over over the structured data or controls over the access to the information systems. Um, that said, you know, it's, it's a business-wide approach. You need to work with all, all business parties. I mean, I'm going through an IEM review right now and, and, you know, I won't be critical of this, but I think we are maybe a bit siloed at the moment because we're trying to get the, a new system in place. Um, and so we're just, you know, we've got our blinkers on. We're like, okay, this is the right technology for our hybrid solution. We have, we have uh, existing on-premise technology. We have a lot of cloud-based technology. Um, we need the right... And, and, cloud native uh, tech so it's not anything we can we can we can't pull a uh, an ad connector into it it's purely purely cloud so in doing that we're just looking evaluating from the market we've brought in several vendors and that's actually part of the iam governance journey is is finding what current tools are best to do this it might be one tool you know i'm not i don't want to name drop you know, there's obviously some big players out there but you'll find one will be great for iam Another will be far superior, as uh, Mark was alluding to, around certification. So one, one will be like really, really good for building out the, the corporate policy and structure, but then the other will be like, well, we certify automatically um, every three months and all your uh, manager has to do is review the list of candidates and it will spit back a very, very articulate report. But that platform won't be able to do secrets management or, or password management. So it's, <laughs> the amount of competitive competition in the market is quite high at the moment. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of working with business identify the business need and then and then and then finding a, a suitable uh, solution fantastic points sir. so that's a perfect segue to my next question train like you mentioned there are various aspects under i am and they need proper governance so uh, you need uh, to break those silos as mentioned by all of you so we have like under i am we have your i am uh, we have your cim we have, you, we have your wim we have your pam and often these are managed by different operational teams does this add to the already existing uh, identity governance challenge? And if yes, how do you overcome this? Well, it, 
it doesn't actually complicate it as it does allows us to see things a bit clearer. So I unfortunately have been in the industry um, now for uh, coming on 20, 23 years. You start to count each year as you go further. Um, and and even in at the, at the turn of the century, just before the turn of the century, we were doing all of this together under one. It was just, it wasn't really even given all these great acronyms. It was just identity, right? So who's in charge of identity? We had someone just assigned to do privilege and one person just assigned to do all, all of the rest. So we, we identified privilege was a separate thing back then. Now we've broken it into proper functional compartments. And this isn't the side of the discussion. This is actually functionality discussion that... For a uh, CIAM, for example, we need a whole new, there's a whole bunch of new APIs we need for this. There's a whole bunch of role, role-based administration controls that we can automatically put in place from a, um, a, a, a governance perspective to say, a CIAM will never have administrative access to our enterprise. So we can, from a very, very high level, apply that template to say, okay, we, and, you know, thanks to some of the online tools that are out there, we can put these rules in place from the start, say, we will never have a data, sorry, we will never have a data breach because of our IAM solution um, uh, doing doing uh, data leakage. The same can be said for our uh, a PAM solution, where we articulate from the very first the the the, the controls. So an easy one would be an IT administrator will never have access to email. Okay, so an email system. We put that control from the very very high uh, a high point in our in our template approach to how we do access control, uh, and we know throughout the full lifecycle journey. This account can never be tied to a uh, an internet facing account. Can never be tied to a a, H, a a user account level permission. It's always kept in that in that um, uh, group of uh, like in that in that role role segmentation. So that's one of the big advantages of the modern ones. Traditionally, it used to be a um, uh, a worksheet that you'd work through, uh, and which was great. I'm not knocking worksheets. I think they're really really useful. But when you go to scalability and when you go past 500 users. Um, that's when you, you've got this challenge of um, it, it can't be done on a, on a spreadsheet anymore or, or on a worksheet. So, um, yeah, the, the new the new terminologies, uh, and as painful as all the acronyms are, and I think IAM is certainly one that is full of acronyms, um, uh, it's it's actually more beneficial to actually, it, it provides us more context as how to break all of our sections apart. Because when I'm working on PAM, I know I'm working on PAM. When I work on IAM or when I'm working on CIAM, I know which area I'm, as opposed to just the, the high level I am only. <laughs> sure. Mark, you'd like to share your th- views, Zil? Yeah, I'm, I'm fully aligned with what Shane mentioned. I, I guess um, when we initially, you know, way back, it's really just one hour and we call it just IAM. I guess right now, because of you know, because of these acronyms, uh, we now have uh, more context. Uh, we now actually can can have focus areas, right? So this is now focused to here, here, and here. Um, that being said, we we have more visibility still uh, with the right prioritization and focus areas. So I guess you know, I'm fully aligned with what Shane mentioned. It's it's not a it's not a challenge per se the way I look at it, but it's really about aligning with the with the general principle of still IAM. Even if we have a lot of acronyms out there, it's still it's the, the general principle of IAM, right? Having the right users, identities, right level of access, right time, right on the right resources. But I think even right now, they, they put more context to that, right? Right location, right behavior, right risk-based scoring, right? Uh, with a concept of zero trust. Even the right, the right time is now being challenged, meaning how do you continuously really validate the time a certain ID has access to what resource. So I think if you're, if all of these acronyms are still aligned with what the general principles of IAM is, and it's now being properly handled because of the right context and right focus areas and prioritization, I think it's still a good thing. And it's not, I, I don't see it as a challenge for now, but it's more of like just making it more comprehensive um, and, and full, in, uh, full coverage across all, our, all of your uh, information assets. So, yeah. So Varun, uh, I would want to touch upon the aspect of legacy applications. So how do you approach access governance for legacy systems that are difficult to integrate under modern IAM platforms from a technology uh, standpoint? I I think, yeah, that's, that's, I think, one of the challenges that, that, that all of us deal with, right? Legacy systems have, have limited capability to be integrated with systems. But having said that, I, I think that there are ways and technologies out there that could 
if, if even if they can't give you the exact ideal state, but you could at least consolidate them uh, from a from a technology solution point of view into into one uh, single system and get the visibility, which is what I think uh, all of us would want, especially on a legacy system where 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 technology is limited, right? So that there are ways to to bring them on into a single platform, at least to get visibility and to understand who has access to what, uh, how do they access it, uh, well, what is the frequency, just, just to understand the behavior of an identity, right? So they, they, there are ways to do it. And, and, and that's one way to put a level of governance, uh, rather than trying to go back to, for example, uh, and a, a system that doesn't support any of the modern authentication systems, and it's it's relying on a very traditional user ID and password uh, sitting on a on a on a system somewhere. So at least you bring them into a centralized platform, and you tie the identities or unique identifiers together, and understand it from from that perspective. A having said that, it's it's difficult to do. Uh, w w one of the one of the challenges that that I I think is very much is because on on one hand all these projects at the end of the day are are considered technology projects i'm going back to my original point right and the 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 challenge that that brings is even even though it, it's considered a technology project you you try and do all these initiatives by your existing teams. Now, I, I touch upon this point quite often in, 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 in conversations like these, because I, I, I come from a lot of experience dealing with very small teams uh, or managing very small teams, right? So now when, when you have a small team, you have a number of things to do. So I, I think while finding the right technology is, is crucial in, in terms of getting support to both modern and legacy systems, but also I think one of the things that we, we, we need to focus on is even if we can't have internal experts, you need to find the right partner uh, to, to drive this, these initiatives for you. Uh, a, a lot of times we might not even understand, for example, uh, how a legacy system works uh, and, and how we could potentially integrate and bring it into a, a, a uh, at least from a visibility standpoint, into a, a single solution. So, uh, trying to do that with with a handful of people with with limited expertise is is always challenging. So, I I, I think as as practitioners and people responsible, you call you got to call out the limitations uh, of of yourselves and the team and and uh, ask for help from 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 uh, management. And that's that's one of the core. Uh, things that that I try and do uh, draw a line where uh, you, you 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 could do uh, what you can do, and there are things that you can't do. So so you ask for help. So I, I think those those are the things that that uh, become a bit of a challenge uh, and and should be taken care of. Sure. So Shane, as one mentioned, you need to look for the right partner. So I have two questions for you. One, when you look for a partner, what are some things that you keep in mind? And second, when it comes to managing legacy applications, can you share a case study on how you managed to bring it under IAM or what were the roadblocks you faced? I think you're on mute, Shane. Shane, uh, you're on mute. You think I'd be used to that? I've had two and a half years of uh, video calls now. <laughs> Apologies. Um, so vendor selection is is, is quite a, um, a a deep topic. I'll, I'll give you the recent example I've, I've done, and that was um, with the amount of players in the market. We 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 went to an independent third party to help us with the down select. Um, just there's so many moving parts. And as I said to you earlier, where where it's a it's a business decision as to what we need. So is it IAM, CIM, CIAM or PAM? And so you're looking at different or, or actually information governance and administration, which is the which is the core um, administrative platform over all three. Um, so we as I said we went to an independent third party um, to do a, a, an initial assessment because we don't we 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 don't have a strong IAM team internally. Um, and we needed to build a new one. We're, we're a new company, uh, so we had to build out this requirement. And we approached the market and we said, 
what we're after is obviously our, our, our customer facing systems. We have our internal systems. We have a very, very large hybrid environment. And in, in down selecting, we, we, we went to market best of three um, and, and we're, we're in the assessment phase of them. Um, so what do we look for? I mean, that was its customer specific to our needs, right? And the, and the, high, the hybrid approach is what we've needed. If we were a pure cloud only environment, the world is easily. This is an easy, easy problem to have. If you're a pure cloud at the moment, there's there's three players out there. Um, uh, you know, I'm not vendor dropping, so I, I can't I can't bring it in. But they are. If you're cloud native, brilliant. If you're on premise native, awesome. Also, because there's some amazing players that have been in the game for a long time and have stayed ahead of the curve. Uh, they're they they're humongous. The real problem is where most of us are, and that's the hybrid. So it's bringing those legacy systems, as Ron was saying, um, along the along the journey. Where I am at the moment, um, I can say we're very, very light touch on the the legacy system. So how do I how do I bring them on the journey? The, the, I suppose they were they were all built in the past uh, fifteen years. So there's enough um, there's enough APIs available to them to to allow them to incorporate to the cloud based systems. Um, However, from my previous roles, all the way back to um, my time uh, with the Australian government, this was a major issue then. And how did we handle it? And we, we actually built multiple platforms. Um, we knew they would never work together or the amount of effort to in, integrate, um, set, uh, integrate single platforms together. We just went with the, no, we're, we're going to treat them as separate uh, units altogether, not, not look for it. And that's okay. You don't have to. It's a business driver. Right? What are you trying to do? You're trying to access management. You're trying to access uh, controls and access privacy, and then certify who has access to what. And so it's okay if you need a system, a separate system for each of those environments. We went with that business decision. So yeah, it's too hard to integrate with a single platform. Um, I think a lot of companies must do that. Uh, someone is saying J.P. Morgan. Uh, Early Mark was saying J.P. Morgan. If you look at any of those big banks, I I'm not in any of them. But I can, I could, I would safely say they would have that approach also. They're not trying to find a one stop shot to IAM. They're trying to find the right IAM provider for each of their uh, respective uh, units. Um, especially when, you know, as I said, API is great. Um, API calls are great. But then if you're talking about systems that don't even have API um, functionality, then, well, none of those systems will work. You need to go back to a legacy system to control your own Indian access management, use the log feeds to get off that and put that into your SIEM. But for the actual management and control, you need to do a, you need to have a system that will work on, the, on, on that relevant technology. Sure. And Marco, I had this discussion with you the last time we spoke. You said that there are multiple layers of stakeholders, right? We have your HR, we have your senior management, we have your app owners, as well as your end users. So how do you bring about that change management to map risk compliance as well as enable, enablement to, uh, I'm, yeah. Yeah, so uh, before, so, so Parna, let, uh, before answering the question, I, I'd like to give also a bit of an insight of the previous question. And I think it's, Shane actually mentioned a, a good one there. So for, for legacy systems, right? And I think it, it still boils down to how do we secure this environment, right? So we're not just looking at it from an IAM perspective, but as what Shane mentioned, you probably want to put in like feeds there, like your SIAM feeds. And even, is there something that we can also put in a, from a network segmentation perspective, not just on the IAM lens of security view, right? But because, and if, you know, we acknowledge this, there may be some technical limitations, but you know, it's, there's no stopping us from doing our custom solutions in getting all the, you know, identities out there, who's got access, how do we put governance around it? So that, that's how I, I, I would uh, take a look at it. But going back to the, you know, to this, to the question, Suparna, I think, it's, uh, I think we, we already um, give a bit of an insight of what that looks like. It's still going to be like a, looking at it from an organization perspective. And so we need to do it as a top-down approach, right? Setting, you know, uh, putting uh, alignment with all of your executive management or, or your senior management um, and setting the right expectations of roles and responsibilities across the organization. Because that in itself will definitely help you in terms of, you know, in terms of your changes that you want to imp implement or across the organization or in terms of your project in building your, your overall IAM program. You know, that, that's how I look at it. Yeah. Sure. Varun, uh, you'd like to share your views here? I, I think it's 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 the same on this topic. I think we have we have briefly touched upon this this point, and I think we started off with this that that it's it's not a technology only project. So 
if anyone in the organization throws it at you as a technology professional that you need to drive it independently of the business, then then you just need to call it out and and bring the right stakeholders and and the right support from all the way to the top. Like like Mark just mentioned, it needs to be top down. Uh, like any governance, uh, you, you can't drive governance bottom up uh, if you want to make it effective. So so and all those uh, uh, stakeholders you mentioned, HR, uh, business, and and and. Uh, even from from a privacy point of view, legal and 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 stuff like that. So you you, you got to bring them all together, uh, and and understand from each of them what, uh, what what their challenges are and how you as technology professional uh, or a security professional can come in and 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 drive it from a from a purely technology uh, point of view. Sure, and my final uh, question to all of you. Yes, sir, you mentioned about breaking the silos. You mentioned about uh, 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 lack of uh, the visibility. You need to have the visibility. So how should current, uh, current IM practices change to make governance easier to manage? Maybe three recommendations from each of you. Shane? Shane, you're on mute. Thank you for telling me again. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so the, the, the three I'll give uh, would be, and it's rehashing what we've already said, but they are kind of important, is that, um, and Vron's just mentioned this one, is, is that it's the business that owns it. We're just, the, we're just the technical facilitator. So if you have an IAM working group or a standing group, it's not, it's not technology. It's certainly not, um, it's not the CIO, the C, C, uh, oh, sorry, C, CIO, CTO owner. It, 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 the definitive source of truth in this environment comes from HR. They're, they're responsible for, they're the, they're the source of truth to an individual starting in the company. Um, if it's on the CIMA, uh, C, IAM, it's the um, head of sales, uh, who's, who's responsible for the customer of that database, right? So they're your primary stakeholders. And then from a governance perspective, you have, uh, it's not CEO, it goes over to your compliance, it goes to your legal. So what's our legal obligations here? Are we regulated in, um, which market are we regulated? What's our controls there? How often do we have to certify to meet those? So through, straight away, we've mentioned three primary stakeholders and none of them are technology. They're all they're all um, uh, external. So we are the means to facilitate, to ensure privacy is put in place, uh, the privilege access, uh, principles of least access. Um, you know, the logging, ordering, uh, logging and auditing is all in place. That's where we come into place. That's where technologists and, and security come in to certify that access control. So HR says this is what our requirements are. This is and this is you know. Shane Reed has started on this date and is working for the finance team. He'll be um, on a three month contract. Now that was derived from HR, not from us. We work with finance team to say specifically what, what, what functionality does this person need? If he doesn't need access to, you know, uh, Microsoft Office Word, for example, well, then he, he doesn't fall into that category, but we don't say that the head of finance says that. Um, so that's that. It's not three recommendations, but that's my key driver is don't think that you uh, should be running this project. You need to you need to work with the other business units to build out the perfect IAM solution, especially for the, at the starting point, which is which is the governance. Absolutely. Mark. Yeah, I think it's still in alignment with what Shane mentioned. I think it's it's all of us, right? Even for an also man, touch upon on that as well. Um, for me, it's really it's really about assessing where you are now. Um, not just really the governance side of it, but also just the IAM as a whole, where you are now. Assess where you are now, because um, you may need to do also continuously improve that process. You probably <coughs> are, you already have those processes in place, but you need to continu continuously improve that. And if you see gaps, still do the top-down approach. It's, it takes the whole organization to build, uh, to improve the IAM program. Right. So um, the other, the other <coughs> aspect to this is um, I'm, I'm really I'm, the, I'm, I'm really looking forward into the future. Um, so the way we we because I'm always going to be an uh, I'll start with visibility guy. I, I, I am. A, so I think in, in the future, when we have more of this automation going on, AI, ML, what, what have you, these now feed are, are and if you are if your IAM is now uh, employing these kind of like new technologies, um, 
you now have another set to look into, not just the identity aspect of it, now the data component of it, right? Specifically the data source, right? You now need to trust the data source that your IAM with AI ML enabled is consuming. So, right, because you know, AI ML is, is prone to poisoning, data poisoning. And so you now need to look into, hey, do I even trust the, the, that's the data that's being consumed by my IA, IAM uh, solutions? So, you know, the continuous improvement is, is, is some, some aspect that I always uh, evangelize. Um, you know, as a security professional, it's, it's something that, you know, even new organizations such as ours right now are starting to look into like AI ML automation. And so I guess this is, this is something that, you know, uh, security professionals will have to, will have to be uh, mindful of and be aware of, of these new, new technologies. So going back, right, just to wrap it up, um, it's, a, it's a basic organization to build your IAM program. You need a top-down approach that everyone will get to understand the roles and responsibilities. You as, an, you as a, uh, a security professional, need to understand your whole organization from a context, context perspective, right? Your, your business units, even the technology, and even the third party, and even your customer that enables uh, those business units to function. Uh, and then from there, build your program and put in always embed continuous improvement. So, yeah. Thank you. And Varun, your recommendations? I, to be honest, I don't know what further I can add uh, <laughs> after what all has been said already. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's the same thing, right? I mean, you, you again, I, I, I can't stress it enough, uh, because I've seen it all happen more often than not that it's considered as a technology project. So, so if, if, if your uh, senior management comes to you, Varun or, or Mark or Shane or anybody out there, you got to run it uh, as, as technology, you just, you just need to call it out immediately. That's not. And and the 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 other point uh, I, I I would mention is 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 about also when you when you bring along business they they want to see the value out of it right so so at the end of the day uh, it's 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 important to to also make it like uh, make the business understand the value of uh, even though even though they 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 would potentially know what we are trying to do but but especially governance what happens is it's it's a slow journey it doesn't happen overnight uh so so what happens is he, he, when it takes a bit of time uh stakeholders start to lose patience and 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 take either resources funding away so i i, I think putting together a roadmap that that has quick wins and milestones on it uh, rather than focusing on the end goal, uh, which which obviously is important, but you're not going to get to the end goal anytime soon. And and any business wants to see some sort of benefit as we go along. So I think I think a milestone based approach, a quick win based approach, is is quite important uh, to 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 sort of just keep the momentum going with the business. Because when you when you're taking the business along, they they would expect uh, some, something to come out of it sooner than later. Uh, so I think that's, uh, to wrap it up, I think that's that's one of the one of the things that you, you could keep in mind while, while driving and, and putting together this roadmap. Thank you. So the take backs would be have a goal, have a top down approach. It's not a technology project. You involve all your stakeholders as well as approach the right partners whenever needed. So thank you so much, Varun, Shane and Mark for sharing your views on how to go about identity governance. Glad to speak to you all. Thank you, Suparna. Thanks, Suparna. Thank this is Suparna Goswami from ISMG. Thank you so much for watching.